Welcome back to Keeping It Real with Kamal and Nola. Today we are looking at a really difficult topic and a very difficult thing to go through and that is when you've been lied to. So I think this is one of my worst to be honest. Lies are my mm. absolute worst. I can't stand it. I mean we all lie every day if you think about it like I'm dying to see you. You're not actually dying to see someone. Um, you you know, look so amazing. And like you and I like if we go shopping you say that looks stunning and I know it doesn't because We've literally talking cheese. <laughs> I like color. She likes white, black, white, <laughs> maybe cream. N- never beige. Okay. Never beige. But we all lie all the time. But actual like deceit. I, it's my absolute worst. And so when someone lies to you, you it is for me the hardest thing. And I think what's even harder is that if someone lies to you and you didn't. You believe them because you want to believe them, because that's the person that you think that they are. It is the hardest. And I remember that that series that was on a year ago. It was called The Undoing with uh, Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. And, um, you know, it starts off with Nicole Kidman's a psychologist and she's got these guys in her um, in her practice and, they, and she's like, you, you don't see what you don't want to see, you know. And actually the whole movie is about how she doesn't see what she doesn't want to see. So we all believe what we want to believe and maybe we've got faulty cognitions. And the real problem with this is if you're wanting to believe a person because you're wanting to believe the good in that person, you don't want to become tainted and cynical. But at the same time, you've got to use discernment. Because that's deception. You fall into deception. Yeah. So Mark Twain said the difference between a person who tells the truth and someone who tells a lie is that the person who lies has to have a very good memory because your lies eventually catch you out. And the Bible says that Satan is the father of lies. He is the one who invented lying. Lying is so popular today. I mean, within kids, adults, um, people live a dupis, dup, duplicit. Dup, duplicit. Yeah. duplicit lifestyle <laughs> in many formats. You know, on social media... Um, the way you present yourself, the way you are behind closed doors. I mean, even filters. Think of filters. I mean, it's like... Yeah. You show your best side. It's 100%. So, so lies is like so common today. Why do you think people lie? I think people lie because they always want to present the best version of themselves. Yeah. So they bring to themselves a distorted image that they already have. And... And then they justify. They justify their those lies. lies, and almost like they all can believe it themselves. Hundred percent. I've definitely I've lived with that, where somebody will so believe their lie mm. that they will start to believe that is actually justifiable because of their their actions are justified because of a reason they in their mind think is correct. But everything that has to be lined up, it's got to be lined up with the Word of God. You know, like. To live honestly, you have to actually be honest with yourself, first of all. And that's why the slap of a friend is better than the kiss of an enemy. And sometimes, like even in friendship, it can be quite ruthless and hard-cutting. And I've probably got about two friends um, that I would honestly, like fr- my entire life, that I would allow to really, where they've said words to me, but I know it's out of like the the benefit of me choosing to be a better person like you need to actually remove that out of your life and it's sometimes it's very hard to to accept truth like that from a friend yeah i think people lie ultimately um because they want to be seen in a certain way obviously but but it's because they're selfish and and the reason i say that is because you are caring about what someone else is thinking about you and so it's actually all about you Mm. so you might be lying um uh, you, you've lied about something specific and it's because you're so concerned about what someone else thinks about you that you lie to them you're actually being so selfish it looks like you're not being because you're wanting them to you, you're lying for their protection yeah. their protection but it's not actually their protection at all and i uh you know that's why i always think if you're honest and also like you're yeah, honesty is the best policy lies, lies, lies. You, when you're honest you can just build on something from the a strong foundation yes i'm just like tell me everything tell me absolutely everything and then we can start building but but as soon as you build on a lie it's just it goes so warped man it's so warped genesis 3 verse 1 to 5 that's where actually deception came in when the devil lied to adam and eve and it clearly shows how satan said 
Um, you know, if you know good and evil, you will be equal to God. You know, only God is good. And it's it's like the, the devil is the father of lies. So that's what he comes to do. He comes to steal, kill, rob, kill, destroy. and destroy. Destroy your thinking that is truth, you know. And only when we recognize Satan's lies and we counteract them with God's truth, which is his word, that's when we succeed in overcoming the the devil and his schemes for our lives. So again, it's going back to the word of God, the word of God, which is your final authority, the word of God, which is the ultimate truth in a person's life. And you know, even if you are not a Christian and you believe in the, in the universe or you believe in the Quran or you're Muslim, whoever you believe in, it, it's actually a law, a law of reciprocity. It's the law of sowing and reaping, which is the first parable in the Bible that Jesus speaks of. Sowing and reaping is the platform and the foundation as to how you actually build your life, layer upon layer, line upon line, precept upon precept. So that law is fundamental in nature. What you sow, you reap. Mm. If you sow sunflower seeds, you're not going to get apple trees. So a person can say one thing, but whatever they live is going to be the outward working of their fruit. So the Bible says, mm. how do you know if someone lies? Well, actually, look, the evidence is in the fruit that they produce in their life. What is the fruit long term in their life? Are they overcomers? Are they successful? Because you'll never stay in a season of constant downward trouble and downward spiral. If you truly are advancing in the kingdom of God and placing your your truth and your life in the word of God, which is alive and breathes life into you. So it, it's what you sow into. You can either sow to the spirit or sow to the flesh. Whatever you sow to, you'll reap, mm. you know? Yeah, so if you look at it, why other people lie, but actually we also sometimes our own thoughts lie to ourselves, and that's when we've got to know the Bible as well, so we can have scripture and say, no, hmm. that's not a right thought, you know? Hmm. And I know I always say, like, when I've got thoughts that I, I can't help thinking, and your mind goes over and over again, you replay scenarios, that, and they're not they shouldn't be there i always imagine like the, the bible says kept you know capture take your, thought, your thoughts take captives. your thoughts capture your thoughts take your thoughts captive take now, your thoughts captive yeah. and then bring them under the truth the truth which is the word of god and you yeah. bring them in, under the obedience to the word and that's a very hard thing because you've got to take those thoughts okay your thoughts are racing neurologically those pathways are going they itched in your mind and you're like full of anger and resentment trust me i've got a standing knife where i wanted to slash tires <laughs> and i've actually thought okay nola how do you react here do you react in anger and frustration and or do you act in the opposite spirit which the bible says you actually place heaping coals on that person's head and so even in a state where you have been so severely let down and lied to the thing is what you have to do is actually release it mm. release those lies and allow god to deal with that person and don't you try and take vengeance well that was going to be my next thing what to do um <laughs> when when you've been lied to before we go with that like i vengeance. always say with my thoughts like if it comes in and i'm thinking no that's not right i imagine it being a person that i'm flinging against the wall <laughs> and then i'm taking their arms and i'm putting them in cuffs and handcuffs and i'm like you won't be my thought you know it's so dramatic but that's how i do it like in my mind i'm like no get out of there <laughs> Yeah, but then like, you know, uh, before we talk about, you know, what to do about it, mm -hmm. if someone's lied to you, um, sometimes you don't know you've been lied to and it's almost like other people mm. can see it, but you don't, you just don't see it. Like you, you oh. just don't see it. And it's That's so hard. Good one. And um, I remember my psychologist, he was like, why have you got faulty cognition? Like, why aren't you seeing it? And I thought, don't tell me I've got faulty cognition. Like, you know, like, <laughs> So it was almost like um, you faulty psychiatrist, it, yeah, <laughs> or like uh, in the in the natural realm, whatever. You can believe something because you want to believe it so much. Yeah. But then your it's unconscious true. actually picks up on things, and your intuition picks up on things, and that's what happens for or me. Or your discernment of spirits. Yeah. So for me, I unconsciously, even a week or two weeks afterwards, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and remember something, and I'll be like, oh my gosh. That's why I couldn't do that. Or that's why they made me, you know, park over there. Or that's why, you know, whatever it is. It's like, <laughs> um, yeah, the deception is real. Yeah. So it, it, 
if it doesn't come out consciously, it, your your body can actually, and your mind, and your unconscious, and your spirit can actually reveal it to you. It's true. Yeah. And the, the biggest thing when somebody has lied and deceived you is you have to forgive. Mm. You, Vengeance you, is not yours. No. <laughs> if anything, the biggest way to walk into freedom is actually just to release it to the Father. And in fact, um, with regards to my situation and my ex-husband even, at times when he had let the boys and myself down, um, whether it was with a lie or just not sticking to his word, I would say to the boys, let's pretend he's a rugby ball and let's just throw him to Jesus. <laughs> Lord have mercy, that rugby ball's gone up to everyone a million times over. And and to this day, I'm like, Jesus, he's yours. Because that expectation that you put on that person, they can't meet it. Only Jesus can actually meet your need. So releasing that person that has lied or deceived you or um, has, has made you to also mistrust people. Because yeah. then you have a mistrust of people and you second guess yourself. And you've got to try and not let that creep in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I know <clears throat> for some reason I, I forgive quite easily. Um, like, and I think it's a good quality personally. But sometimes you've got to get angry. And, mm. and so, because anger is an easier emotion to deal with than sadness and disappointment. That's oh, yeah. 100% sure. So I know, when, especially for men, men would rather be angry yeah. than vulnerable. Yeah, because they, then they justify everything. Yeah. So I'm like, I needed to get angry, but I, I battled to get angry actually because I always look at the thing behind why the person would have done it in the first place, you know. And so, but at the same time, you want lies to be exposed, and I do believe that lies get exposed over time. They do. And I do believe that um, you, your ego, your pride, and everything in you wants. Once that lie is to be exposed and you want to go out and expose that lie. But I do believe you need to come in the opposite spirit and God, you know, vengeance is the Lord's and not mm. yours. So lies generally do come out. And if they don't, you've also got to be okay that they never do, which is also quite hard. <laughs> like it doesn't come back to them. But most of the time it does, actually. You've got to get the rugby ball. You keep throwing it to Jesus. Just throw that ball. <laughs> throw that ball to Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, take the rugby ball. Um, yeah, so what, what to do when you be lied to is really just take it to God, hey, I mean... Don't take it into your own hands. We try to, but trust me, we can't. <laughs> no. <sighs> but lies are really Man. my worst, so... I feel for you, yeah. Yeah, if you have been lied to... I'm sorry. Yeah, it's I so... am sorry, because it's, it's really horrible. It's the worst feeling in the world. Do you know what it is? It's like you've seen this person in a certain way. I was, I was explaining it to you the other day, I think. Mm, and did. now you learn all of these other things about this person... Let me get back into the camera. All these other things about this person, and now the person isn't who you remember they, who they were. So you now know, not only grieve the loss of, or, or you don't only get upset about the lies, you grieve the loss of the person that who person. you thought that they were. Yeah, so you like, power. you're losing it twice. It's like, that's right so there. much. <laughs> yes. No, no, seriously, that right losing there is such a key. You're grieving the loss of the person you that thought you, they were. You, uh, you thought they were. The person you walked down the aisle to. The person that you once met at that restaurant and was so amazing and you had such a good friendship and laughed together and now who is the person you literally like who is this person yeah, and it's usually the person who's like the, the people who are closest to you that are obviously going to be yeah. lying and that affect you the most so do you want to say um some like a prayer or some words that people can say if they've been lied to and yeah you know, it, you know i want to say Unfortunately, it, it, it's a horrible... We're in a fallen world. We are. We are in a fallen world. So, Father, right now, we just come before you, Lord God, and we stand united in faith. We, Father, we've had to trust you in this area of our lives, where we've been lied to and deceived, that Satan, you are the father of lives, not Jesus, but that, Lord God, our hope is in Christ. And right now, we just break off lies that have cemented themselves over people's minds in the name of Jesus. I take authority over people's thoughts of suicide and depression that has come from deception even about the way they see themselves. Maybe people, your loved ones or people that are close to you, your mom or dad, have spoken lies about who you are. Let me tell you, you are made in the image of God. 
God has a plan and a purpose for your life. So all those lies now are smashed in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you would begin to see through the eyes of Jesus how he sees you. That those calluses that have been formed over your eyes, that they are removed now in Jesus' name. I speak calluses, glasses that are so thick and distorted in the spiritual realm that have been placed over people's eyes listening to this YouTube channel would be gone now in Jesus' name. And I release your power, Lord God, that people would be able to see themselves how you have fashioned and carved them and created them for such a time as this. You are not living in this day and age by mistake. But there is a purpose that God has for you. There is a plan that God has for you. A plan to prosper you and your family and to give you a hope. This nation and the nations of the world, we can't look to. We can't look to governments. We can't look to the economy. But we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We keep our eyes up heavenward for that is where our help comes from we do not look to the left or to the right but we keep our eyes on jesus for that's where our help comes from he is the lord he is the maker of heaven and earth and so we don't trust in the economy of this world we do not even trust in the the stock exchange because even that is 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 unstable father we look to you jesus you are the prince of peace you are your banner over us today is love. And so, Father, right now, where lies have actually come in, where we people are living in fear, even of themselves, of, of, of the decisions that they make, because a man who is unstable in all his ways is, is like a shipwrecked, and you are double-minded. Right now, I pray peace and that double-mindedness mm. to be still, and God to give you a strategy and begin to lead you and guide you in these next coming days that he will supernaturally put people across your path that will help you and build you into the things of God into fruitfulness in the mighty name of Jesus I pray amen amen peace out <laughs>